Hey everybody, welcome to the Fun House Podcast. I'm Armando Torres and today I'm joined by a whole group of very fun people. Uh, we've got Charlotte McGrath. As per usual. And we've got two special guests from Achievement Hunter visiting us. We've got Hi. Jack and Joe. Hi. Hello. What's Thanks up? for having us. Thank you everyone. Yes. All of you beautiful people. Say you're welcome. <laughs> Say it. They're very quiet out there. Stop, pause the video right now. Go to the comments and leave one that says hello. You ungrateful fans. The fact that happened in the first 30 seconds, I mean, people will probably do that. You know, it's about 20 minutes in is when you, like, you start good. asking for stuff and they're like, you don't get that. It's so good you're here because we don't know anything about YouTube. Oh, no. I'm talking about Rooster <laughs> yeah. Teeth. What's YouTube? Oh, okay. <laughs> you watch video content outside of Rooster Teeth? No. 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 What? Whoa. No. What's the rules, guys? Thank you for having us on. I appreciate yeah, thank it. you for being here. Yeah, this is Joe. This is yes. Uh, he's Joe. a stray. That, uh, uh, <laughs> I kind of like. I was just like walking on the street, and then these guys were just like standing by a door, and they're like, mm -hmm. "Hey, you want to come talk to a lovely crowd?" And I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." And then I got here, and then and then two weeks later, a, we met him, and uh, we hired him to be part of Achievement Hunter. So, yeah. yeah, so now I'm here. Well, he the, the part of the story no one ever talks about is how he said no. Yeah, and we yeah. we uh, held him at gunpoint and mm -hmm. said, "You're gonna be." funny yeah and charming and likable yeah, yeah well that that i mean jack you want to elaborate on that because that is what happened yeah yeah well, pretty much we just started yelling at him to do stuff he's become the whipping boy of the group which is pretty great <laughs> it's it's nice to have like it's it's one of the you know it's like the unspoken rule of any time you get hired into a new group you know whoever is the newest person you pick on him a little bit and oh and, i know but forever it's just gonna be joe like yeah. whoever we hire new yeah. it's just gonna be joe from this point on yeah so. i'll yeah, always no, be I, the new guy i get it yeah. oh did you get did you get hazed a little bit oh i don't know do i get hazed not a little bit? get hazed no shut the fuck up okay. i want to let our guest speak please okay i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> could you uh, remember your place yeah i'm sorry i am very small oh. manda's like been the first true like new person in a while because before that patrick and i were the new hires but we had also been around for yeah. years as part of the inside gaming reboot so through us Osmosis, we were brought on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Normally, yeah. people will ask me, like, how do I get a job at Funhouse? And I go, well, you either work for a, a company that went out in a burning place of glory, <laughs> or you do nothing at all related to the channel and then run a podcast and get picked up. Yeah. No, I mean, we did for a long time, we kind of hit a point where we sort of, we've, we've had these things where it's like we, we build up and then we sort of pause, then we build up and pause. And then we've hired three people within like the past year, really. We, we got Kai, BK, and Joe, mm -hmm. yeah. who all kind of came in. BK and Joe came in at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's been great, though. Like, I mean, I'm I'm definitely the old guy of the group, obviously, at this point. And I've been doing Achievement Hunter since the inception of it, which was mm -hmm. 14 years ago in July. And so, uh, you know, at this point, all of my my ideas and thoughts are just an old hat. I'm like, I don't, you know, no one cares oh, about my shit, shit anymore. So well, we, care, we, we bring in the fresh, you know, the fresh pair of uh, fresh pair of brains is what I was going to say. That's not right. Achievement Hunter? <laughs> is it a pair I, of brains? I, I, I have more than one brain. Yeah. Well, you have two, you have we like two a pair sides. of pants, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I have two sides. So I guess it is like two Yeah, brains. it's a pair of brains. It's Achievement hard. Hunter is 14 years old. Yeah, on, uh, on God, July yeah. 28th of this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. old enough to smoke, old enough to be a fan of achievement, yeah. <laughs> old enough to vote if you do it right. <laughs> but uh, you can vote at any age. That's what they don't tell you. You just gotta yeah. steal the ballot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not legally, but you can. Well, um, no, but the I law mean, should never stop you from doing it. No, I'm not even gonna start that. <laughs> okay. again. I do that too much. Yeah, you, you like to advocate it. for breaking the law. Yeah, a lot. And no one will hear a follow up that's uh, saying it's a joke. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm really glad that uh, you two are here. The reason that you're here is because you uh, just ended your leg of the uh, a very normal podcast tour doing Achievement Hunter Live. You're lying. No, it wasn't part of the podcast oh, tour. Oh, it was just a separate <laughs> thing. It, yeah, it, it was a separate, separate thing. thing. They squeezed in a, a podcast tour yeah. show during our run. So we did, we did three ah. shows in four days. And then on April 1st, they did the RT podcast mm -hmm. yeah. back in Austin. So we did the 31st, 2nd, and 3rd. And they, they snuck one in between our thing. So there were four Rooster Teeth events in four days. Yeah. And we had and three of them. And then ours, you know, a couple weeks before. Which yeah, very yeah. Good. No, no, I heard fantastic things about it. I'm sorry I missed it. I would have loved to have come out for it. I was trying to do the bit, and then you were sincere. No, no I love <laughs> no, you guys. I apologize. I watch, I watch so much Funhouse content. Like, I'm... I'm a big fan of, of everything you guys do. And like the Charlotte, the stuff you've been putting out lately has been fantastic. Me? Yes. The Blackstone, that was one of the funniest goddamn things I've seen on the internet. Oh, ever. That was that was everyone else. I just no, got the ball rolling. On. Oh no, I love that. That's that's really cool to hear. Is the Blackstone around here anywhere? Or is it uh, like it's a, it's on my desk. I, I could I could show you later oh, no. if you think you can resist the temptation. Well, I'm nervous if I touch it, that's it. Game you over. haven't seen something so featureless. <laughs> yeah. Uh but no, that's 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 really thank you for saying so. Yeah. I used to I 
I watched a lot of Achievement Hunter oh, when wow. I was in college. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and yeah. Funhouse, to yeah. be fair, yeah. yeah. You don't have to say that. I don't mind. No, it's true. Why it's, would I say that for you? I, mean, I work it is, here too. It is wild though, hearing people talking. I mean, because like we've been doing, again, we've been doing this 14 years now and Rooster Teeth just turned 19 on April 1st. Um, old, old enough, enough to, to vote. Die. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And just like hearing people saying like, oh, yeah, I watched Achievement Hunter back when, you know, like people, like content creators now. So many people like, oh, yeah, I watched I watched your stuff 10 years ago or a decade ago. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've been doing this for so long. And but it, it is it is cool to, you know, hear people coming up and say like, oh, you, you helped inspire kind of what we do. And it's like even if we had a little hand in kind of what happened, that that means the world to me is really neat. And now I'm, you know, as a content creator, I'm sort of trying to step back and letting, you know, the new guys like Joe's and your BK's and your Kai's like, let's see their vision and like try to facilitate what they have where I can kind of step back and do things like AH Live and more of the bigger concept mm -hmm. types. That, like, I love doing that stuff. I love doing live shows in any way to make that happen. I want to do more of and, and the tour was great. And so hopefully we'll get to do more of them. Yeah, your your live show is uh, very well produced. Thank you. Which I know sounds like such a weird comment, but like. When you see it, it's very put together, even if behind the scenes things are, you know, a hectic mess, you're trying to figure it out, whatever. Mm -hmm. From the perspective of the audience, like the production value of the videos, the different segments that you have, all these like there were lighting cues, oh, yeah. you know, it's it's just it was such a well produced show. Thank so, you. Like, yeah. Really genuinely the venue great was nice. job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we had three. Yeah. It's it's fun because we do we typically play these these big beautiful theaters, which is like we do not deserve to be in, you know. <laughs> like we did uh we did an AH live at the Dolby Theater where they do the Oscars like the, a few years back. It's like we should oh my goodness. Why are we in here? Like this is not like we and it was still less violent than the, <laughs> the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, last night we played the Novo, which is more like a rock venue, and it's like okay, this feels like where we kind of belong, and that felt really good, and it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to do more stuff like that, like kind of go to those kind of venues, a little yeah. bit smaller, but have a little bit more energy to them. The small and, venues um, are nice because it allows the uh, the energy to kind of like flow through the room without having like any like empty negative space. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, last night's show was fun. I absolutely love a. Um a more intimate venue whenever yeah. I'm doing like live anything. It just, I don't know, the ability to like look somebody directly in the eye and they're like just part of it now. Yeah, yeah. I like it. It was fun. But even like like last night, uh, like you were saying, like the show can be a little chaotic and behind the scenes, there's a lot of like cats running around that you're trying to like scoop up and like, okay, next, who, who's next? And me just yelling down the hallway at people. But um, literal cats too. Yeah, it's, it was. Well, we don't talk Weird. about that. Well, they, that they act, that that act got cut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's me. So I always talk. We have Adam Baird, who's our tech director on the show. He's like basically he's basically stage manager director of the show, and him and I are like the left brain, right brain of the whole show. Or it's like pair, I come up with pair these, of brains. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pair of brains, Joe. Okay. Well, now I know. I'm <laughs> right. I'm not. Jeez. I wasn't trying to say anything. Jeez. to Joe. No, no, no. Now don't I save Joe. No. <laughs> he needs this. Yeah. He needs I to need learn. Learning. He needs to pull the TV down on himself. Yeah. Jack's saying a lot of like really good, sincere shit. I hope you're writing your yeah. speech for the oh, end. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm writing yeah. it right now. Okay, good. I can see him working yeah. away. Yeah. I've got like maybe yeah. like actually. I've got like three words down already. <laughs> Webster's dictionary <laughs> defines, yeah, yeah. and the rest will figure its way out. But uh, Adam Baird is he's he's the the director, sta the stage manager, director of the show, and then I'm the creative on it. And like our brains work together really well to make this happen. Our brains, plural. And uh, and it's just a lot of fun because he kind of takes the stuff that I concept and he's like, oh, we can actually make this happen. And so he, and he works with all the crews and knows all that. And then it gives me the opportunity to kind of get wild with it. And but it is still like it, working with him and working with the, the, the whole team is it's been a lot of fun and, and works well. Where like even last night I was like, hey, Mondo, you want to do five minutes? And he's like, you, know, you jumped on and did five minutes. And it was yeah. great. And it was like we were able to make that happen because we were a bit ahead. So we had some time brought you on and got to do stuff like that. And. It was a really fun, unexpected thing, and I didn't know. I'm not saying this is any kind of slight at all, but with the Rooster Teeth audience, <laughs> they're they're different than a normal stand-up crowd. Yeah. So uh, normally I would do a set that's like just the hits, but this time I had to do like a what would it be like a litmus test where you're like, <laughs> I'll do this joke, and if they laugh at it, <laughs> yeah. I'll move on. Feel to the them next out a little one. bit. Yeah. yeah. I felt them pull back on one, and I just went, I was just going to talk about shit in my pants, and then that went great. So. Yeah. It did go well. I was watching from the side of. Uh, from backstage, yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty. Oh, good. thank you. Yeah, I love hearing about. <laughs> this how you went pretty good. You can be okay. He's like, yeah, I, you're all right. Good. I loved how you were talking about shitting your pants, <laughs> and how someone in the audience shit their pants a year ago. Everyone shits their pants. That's uh it's the it's the great equalizer. It I thought makes Denzel Washington was the equalizer. <laughs> well, this is the great equalizer. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
I uh, I really loved watching watching the show, watching the energy that you all had together, uh, because it's you know there's so many people at Achievement Hunter, both that work there currently that are like uh, what would you call like friends of the show or like cr- yeah. content cousins. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I don't think you would say that. I don't think <laughs> I think you should. wanted to say that. Yeah. No, I think my brain was searching for a term and it said that and then went ugh. <laughs> Uh, but there, yeah, there, there's, it's this melt melting pot of like, like you said, some of the, the people that have been there longer, some newer people, uh, some people that have done it before, like Fiona and, and Iffy, uh, and it just, it was so fun to watch, you know, yeah. just watch this show with the, with so many different styles of humor come together. And then also some seriousness where I saw, uh, Jeremy went out there and performed like a full live song oh, yeah. that mm-hmm. at every single point I thought was going to turn into a bit. No. It was just an awesome performance. That's, yeah, that's yeah. his uh, his work, his original work. Yeah, that was man, his so. his music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it's it's that's the beauty of it is because you know as Achievement Hunters grown, we have so many talented people that mm-hmm. have so many cool talented things they do, and it's like you get a Jeremy who can sing a song. You know, you get like these improv guys. You get Trevor came up with this beautiful like Steve Jobs impersonation thing that was hilarious, and then. Then we, you know, like we get like yeah. Joe and like Who Alfredo just, who's like, go to go, go out there and dance. It's like, sure, why not? It's yeah. like, we try to do the shotgun approach where it's like, we're going to throw everything out there and you're going to probably like at least one bit. <laughs> so uh, it's, you know, it's, it's fun. And it, it's neat because it's not just like, it's not just like a stand up show where it's like, oh, here's, you know, you're going to do five minutes, you do five minutes, you do five minutes. Like, no, 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 we're going to give you a, a big variety of like tabletop games and like, you know, video games and then comedy is just all over the place and try to make it fun and you know, entertaining and make it feel like you got your value from your ticket. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I really appreciated about your show is because we did a fun house live on March 15th. And instead of doing a regular podcast, we did very similar to what y'all did, which is just a bunch of different segments mm-hmm. that sort of got weaved together. Um, and it was more of a live show because I, have seen live podcasts before and i i always think it's so strange if you have the opportunity to play with this new medium that you don't get on a normal yeah. podcast yeah. and just refusing to do it like just sit on a couch and then you know mm. just do a normal podcast rtp didn't do that they they did the you know they different segments videos from us yeah so i'm thinking we get some videos from from eric from guys, <laughs> we should play them during our podcast. Oh, Eric is super them. lazy; he doesn't do anything. So, well, I did something for him. So, I, I <laughs> you're owed. I did. Too. I am owed. You're owed. I am owed, Bador. Yeah, you tell you Eric. Fucking rat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael's a rat. Michael's a spice rat. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that that I don't know. That that's was the gist of my compliments. Was great job playing with the space, allowing it to be something that was more than just like it. It truly was. It wasn't a, a podcast live show. It was Achievement Hunter Live. You yeah. kind of capture the essence of what makes the channel the channel and then turn it into a live show, which yeah. is awesome to watch. I mean, that's the whole idea is like, you know, you guys know this too, where it's like when you're making content here, you're just trying to make the people in the room with you laugh. Whereas when you have a crowd, it's like you get that energy from a crowd. And it's like you've got to play into that because mm-hmm. you don't get that ever, you know, unless you're doing an RTX or a live show. And so we go out of our way to be like, how can we incorporate the audience? What can we do that we can't do on stage? Like we have these electric shock things that like we throw on everybody just oh, because yeah. it's like you, that doesn't really play in a YouTube video. You can't see that on a mobile phone. But when you see someone on stage, when you see Joe's arm flailing around right. and he can't control it. Yeah. You know it's what? Hilarious. I feel like all I brought to that show was a high pain tolerance. <laughs> that yeah. was my entire like the, the entire point of my existence throughout the tour was in a crop top. And a crop top. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much pain can I endure, and how far can we push you? Yeah, yeah. I don't think did I you? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just oh. the spicy thing. Did you did you do that every night of the tour? No, no. Jack thankfully forgot on okay. two shows. Yeah, and then the last show in L.A. I was like, you know what? I haven't done it since like since we said we we're gonna do it. Let me just take a big mouthful. Mm. But in that in that excitement of I'm gonna go out with a bang, I accidentally like sniff some, someone in my nose. Oof. So you were, you were telling me this story beforehand. You've yeah. been explaining like the full bit, like what happened. Oh, so, well, <clears throat> like you want me to explain like what, like why we even did it? Yeah. Oh, well, just cause, cause Jack, anyone, uh, yeah. they might not know. Jack was teasing for like two months to the people that are going to H Live. We're gonna light Joe on fire. It was yeah. like one initial tweet and then it just kept growing. 
we were like Joe on fire. Like a for flame. The, for yeah. the show. Yeah. yeah. He was going to be and on so fire. so I was like, you know what? That's fine. And then his solution to that, like the, what we were going to do was I was going to take a mouthful of Scotch bonnet flakes. And if you guys don't know what a Scotch bonnet is, it's just like a, it's a really hot pepper. Oh, okay. And Scotch um, bonnet. Yeah. It's and, Steve Bonnet's uh, <laughs> special, special herb. Oh, okay. John Bonnet Ramsey actually didn't didn't feel very special one. No, <laughs> no. Um, but so like I'm just supposed to you know I was supposed to like take a scoop at the end of the show and do the finale. A little bit, a little, a small. little, a little one. But like I said, it was the last show. We haven't done it. Go out with a bang. Mm -hmm. I took probably what should have been like less than like half a teaspoon. I took like almost a full tablespoon. Yeah, <laughs> you had, he was using. See, that's where you went wrong. And, yeah, and then in my excitement of trying to do it i sniffed it and some of it went in my nose i wanted to go blow my nose out after the show there was like chili flakes coming out everywhere he used uh like you know you go to a froyo place and they have the little sample spoons it was mm -hmm. that and just fucking loaded it up full <laughs> scoop yep. and i got to i was standing behind him with the light hitting him so i got to watch it go in his mouth and then he coughed and i just saw powder go <laughs> <laughs> It's like, man, it was my horrible. God, yeah. yeah. And it was funny. I knew it was. I mean, I knew it was legit because I'd seen him test it before the mm -hmm. show. Because I didn't want to kill him. And uh, and it, like, well, we, the the finale of the show is where everyone does a sing along is because they get that energy from the audience. And Joe was just walking around back behind everyone, just crying, just tears, and like pouring water <laughs> on his head. It's like was, not not a bit. Like yeah, this wasn't for the it, crowd. It, it was just, hurt. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> I I was I was like everyone was singing and in in, in the panic like while everyone was singing I was like walking behind everyone I was just screaming I was just <laughs> screaming pain I was like ah <laughs> I was just going nuts and then I turned to the camera because we were feeling like a little documentary and I said I fucking hate this tour <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so. it's it's a blast and this is the first time ever too we did again we did three shows in four nights which. Mm -hmm. We did we did uh, Seattle to start, and then we got a travel day, and then we did San Francisco, and then we woke up the next morning, flew to L.A., and then did a show that night. Oh, you which, flew? That makes sense. Yeah. and I, I don't know. I envisioned you guys all on a big van hanging out. Yeah. And <laughs> we did a bus tour. Scotch bonnets. We, did, we did a bus tour in the East Coast, and it was awesome. Like, we did Newark. We did... Um, God, what was it? What was the second city we did? We did Orlando Dover? and Tampa. No, oh, cool. it was... Uh, I am not. It was Baltimore. We did Baltimore. Oh, okay. And so uh, that was a blast. And we we literally had one of those buses where you, they had like the little coffins that you slipped into, and you would go down and keep your feet forward. That was the big thing. That was the big thing on the bus. When you're sleeping on the bus, put your feet towards the driver because they oh, hit anything, yeah, and your your head is up front. Mm, that's bad. Coffins. That's bad. Yeah, they're little like they're. I mean, they're literally like it's like a bunk bed except compressed. Where I could slide into it, but I had maybe six inches of space between me Ooh, and the top. I, I hate that. To I would not be able I to fit it. in that. It was awesome. It was awesome. Well, they they had other rooms too. They had like a room in the back that was like the, the nice room. No, you know? but I'm not. Here's the thing. I'm I'm Joe. You know, they're not gonna <laughs> let me in that. Yeah, well, that's the, Omar's room. I mean, I know why they call them coffins now. People probably die in them from claustrophobia. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I slept like a baby though. It, really? it was it was awesome. I yeah, think, well, yeah. babies die all the time. That's well, awful. You're supposed to be dead before you go in the coffin. Oh yeah, True. I think before, standard standard procedure. Yeah. I think what we've sits. established in this podcast is at age 19, that's when you're ready to go out. Hey, listen, you had a good run, kid. High school done, <laughs> and you had a year to see the world. Why don't you shove off? Oh, man. But yeah, we, we talked about like doing, if we're doing another tour, uh, we'll probably end up getting a, a bus, like do a bus travel thing. But it was just, it was something, I, it was, the buses are very expensive yeah. to do that. They're very, like tr like tour buses are very expensive. So it would have to be something where we do like five or six shows to kind of cover the cost of that. I've always so. loved, uh, I do stand up and I'll go on the road. And like normally when you're doing it, you have like travel buddies for parts of it. Mm hmm so like I'll go open up for my friend and we go on the road together for a couple of weeks and then he's going to go do his like East Coast part of the tour or whatever. This is just our AC. <laughs> <laughs> just noises everywhere around here. Anyway, there's just the, the, the point of it is, is that like the ability to be in a car, in a vehicle and drive and get to see things as you're like going past and get to stop. It's just so nice. Yeah. It's such a great way to like driving around the country. It's such a great way to explore America, except for most parts of America. <laughs> <laughs> Those in-between parts yeah. where it gets rough. But then there's a couple parts where, like, I remember driving through Utah and just being like, ugh, I got to drive through Utah. This is fucking gorgeous, oh, yeah. man. Utah's pretty. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, you, like Texas. I've driven from Austin to Los Angeles before, 
And it's, I mean, it's 20 hour drive within the crazy thing is El Paso is the halfway point. So you're still in, you're still in Texas and it, that's the halfway point. Oh but out in West Texas, uh, a lot of people don't know about this, but they have um, giant windmill farms. Mm -hmm. So they do a lot of windmill electricity out there. And you literally see thousands of these enormous windmills mm -hmm. just because they're out in the middle of nowhere. And driving through is like, it's really, really cool. It's something you never expect to see. But it's, the, it's fascinating. We have that here. Uh, my hometown is Indio, California, over by Palm Springs where they do Coachella. And they have those same thing where it's just those windmills. And they always remind me of like, I don't know, just this kind of weird, like dystopian <laughs> Mad Maxi future because it just looks so odd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you right. drive, if you drive through them at night or when there's like a sandstorm or whatever, it looks so it's glowing red. Oh, yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. so cool. Yeah. yeah, I saw a lot of those when I moved to Austin. Yeah, because uh, I drove down from Denver, so that was like a 15-hour drive. Um, it was actually a really pretty drive. Mm -hmm. uh, I drove the whole way, and like we didn't stop, but. I don't know. I was expecting like when I got into Texas, everything is just like super flat and there's nothing, but there's a lot of rolling hills and like a lot of, I don't know. It was just nice. It was nice. I'll wait till you get to the rolling rocks. That's rolling rocks. Well, that's where I died because I was, you know, past 19. So <laughs> past 19 miles per hour. Yeah. That's where you, that's the danger zone. Oh, yeah. The speedometer is what Start I call it. going 20 and that's when you're asking for God to step in. <laughs> God steps in the moment you cross into Texas. Uh, I have a question regarding road trips. What do we, what are, where do we land snack wise? Ooh, oh. my go to if I'm flying solo, my wife's not with me. Um, I will stop and get a gallon jug of water, like one of the ones with a handle, mm -hmm. and just drink that straight. And also a big old thing of Pringles, as opposed to big what water Pringles. with a mixer. No, 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 no. like uh, like the, chaser, chaser, water, <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Texas. Uh, <laughs> no, like, you know, it typically you get like, you know, like a little bottle of water. I get like a gallon water with a handle. Yeah. So that way you can actually just like just pop the top off and drink it. You don't have to like pour it in anything else. Do you have oh, cup yeah. holders that can accommodate that? <laughs> I have a seat again oh, by okay. myself. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. So it's so all on being alone. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. Afraid you you got to go to the dealer yeah. to get that. <laughs> <laughs> give me a. But no, the pring Pringles is the way to go, man. Get a, get a cheese Pringles, nacho cheese Pringles. Oh, well, isn't that. that annoying when it gets to like the bottom of the can and you're like dry? You just shake it on your face and sprinkle all over the place. I feel like oh, okay. the crumb factor is significant. Yeah. You know? Again, by yourself. You can by stop, yourself, pull yeah. over, dust yourself off. Yeah. So I got to hide my slobbiness, you know. I, I try to be as, as clean as I can yeah. around people. But when I'm by myself, I'm just a garbage no, I'm human. A, I'm a mess in my car. One of my favorite things about taking, like, any semblance of a road trip is just, like, I'll, like, get snacks and stuff, and I'll just, like, throw the trash and Not, like, food trash or anything, but, like, if I have to, like, rip off, like, something, like a tab, toss it. And then yeah. I just, like, have just a bunch of shit in the, the passenger seat that I have to dig through to find, like, well, not a map. It's 2022. But things <laughs> like that. I don't know. I, uh, I got... So, first of all, I'm a gross person when I'm on the road. It's There's no way around yeah, it. I yeah. have road clothes that i will wear so that whenever i get to whatever venue i'm going to i can change out of them but it's fucking gross <laughs> also shouts out to a very good friend of mine billy anderson who introduced this to me in my life is uh is that like louis son what is that louis son yeah but the good louis okay louis anderson uh they uh he introduced me to this thing that he calls uh the shame towel which is this just towel you have in your car that you put over you while you're eating so that way you can spill as much as you want and you just have like a gross bib in the back seat of your car i, I, I like that tedious, i like it yeah. a lot i heard yeah. shame towel and my mind went blank oh yeah he also comes in it yeah a lot oh there it there's is there's a I'll lot of there's a lot of nights on the road <laughs> i mean i I have a bit of a reputation around here for spilling. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where it came from. It's baseless and uncalled for. But I also like to wear things like white turtlenecks. Uh, and so I do will sometimes put on like a shirt t-shirt over it that I will call my eating shirt. And I, <laughs> I do forget to take it off sometimes. So I'm editing a video right now where I can see that I'm wearing my eating shirt. <laughs> Which is just like an inside gaming shirt. Like it's yeah. not a bad look but i did put it on specifically so i wouldn't get stains on. you know how you see like artists walking around in coveralls that just have like paint on <laughs> yeah, them like that's streets. like us but it's just food and grease <laughs> yeah now how often do you wash the eating shirt i mean the eating shirt is not necessarily a specifically designated eating shirt more so just like a, maybe a t-shirt that i'm a little bit less worried about so okay. like yeah 
I just happen to have one here. And sometimes when I'm at home, I'll just grab like a fresh tea out of the t-shirts are so versatile. You know, I <laughs> use it to dry my hair. Wow. Because so, it's it's more soft. So how often do you take them home and wash them? Well, <laughs> it's not like I'm, I don't have like a supply of eating. Some, I, I don't know. Sometimes there, there I'm doing it here. We always, blue shirts. We you always just have them? merch here. <laughs> yes. It's most, okay. So eating shirts, <laughs> eating shirts are mostly rooster teeth merch that's here in a box. You got me. Okay. I've also apparently your to towels to too are also. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's, you got to get a towel that's not got not too many graphics on it mm -hmm. because the cotton shirts are softer and better for your hair than a towel. Mm. And then I pop, which is you like sort of pile your hair into it. It's good for wavy and curly hair. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking, see like red versus blue. So those are the shirts that you use? The red versus. I haven't ones. used those specifically, but okay. I mean, we haven't had like barbecue well, or every anything. Time, every time Charlotte spills, it changes the green versus pink. Yeah, <laughs> right. Every stain. Yeah. <laughs> this one's my barbecue. It's this caboose okay. versus barbecue. Caboose versus I guess I opened myself up for this criticism. Well, <laughs> I tried using Achievement Hunter merch for my eating shirt, but every time I looked in the mirror, it just says, you can do better. And I go, I know. <laughs> Fuck. Oh man, that's as I've gotten older, I've watched the merchandise we we produce be cooler and cooler, and I can't wear it anymore. No, come on, dude. We have like we have your Joes and your Alfredos and your Trevors, like these good looking young guys, and I'm like, oh, I, I can't rock that, that okay. shit. I mean, like your right Patrick's, here. your Jacobs. <laughs> yeah, please don't put your Ryan's. Anyone? Yeah, but there's also fun merch. Funhouse <laughs> merch, like like slick Funhouse merch. Absolutely, you could rock that. But how dare you? I'm an old <laughs> man, and I'm like gross, and I'm like I don't want to. You, you don't want to see me in streetwear. <laughs> I would Why look not? ridiculous. I would just look you silly. You would look absolutely. I would. I you throw me in like those like those colorful hoodies where it's like all the big like the patch color ones. I'm like that doesn't work you don't on me. You have to wear that. I, I, that's, that's what I'm saying. I don't have to, but you don't want to see me. There, in that. there's right. some there's some really nice muted streetwear that I think you could do that mm -hmm. looks good on people that are older. <laughs> Um, I don't, now I feel bad using this as a segue, but <laughs> how close are you to Omar's age? How old is Omar? I don't know. I don't think. <laughs> Probably close, I, I guess think, then. I feel like Omar is like young. 35 or oh, something. Oh yeah, I'm way above Omar. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how old you are. No, I, ju I just turned 40 this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jack's yeah. basically doubled his, like, chance to die at this point. 40? Yeah. My dad is two years older than you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you could be my son almost. <laughs> Maybe I am. Papa? Do you want Joe and I to bounce? Like, yeah, we're yeah. gonna, we're gonna have yeah. I can't believe I got to say this last night on your show and this morning on my show. Did you fuck my mom? <laughs> oh my god. That was so funny. Oh my god. Oh. That was such a good little improv like session. I got a call back to a joke the audience didn't know about. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's well, you want to explain it? You can explain it. Yeah, sure. We, Explaining we, jokes is the way to do it, actually. <laughs> uh, people appreciate that. Yeah. One of the segments that you guys had on your show is improv games, and you invited us up there to do some improv games. And the first one that we played was called the questions game, where you can only communicate in questions. And you're supposed to build out a scene. Um, we did not do that. The prompt was San Francisco, and it immediately just became, what question can I think of in my head? <laughs> and Lindsay got up there, and the scene we ended up making was, she was saying, like, I can't, uh, I can't believe I, have I told you yet, or something like that. And, and the, the way that the scene went organically was that she said that uh, she didn't tell me, did I tell you about your mom? And I said, what are you talking about? And she's like, is this a bad time to say that we're more than friends? And <laughs> I just completely derailed the scene by just asking, are you fucking my mom? <laughs> and then she asked another question that could have kept the scene going. And my response was, fuck the improv. Are you fucking my mom? <laughs> And then the scene, she yeah, they, they, just, they just walked yeah, away yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. That was so funny. Yeah, the, yeah. the improv stuff, that's, I am, I'm garbage at improv comedy like that. Like with a video game or something, for some reason, oh, I'm fantastic at that, but like on stage doing, like coming up with shit, I just can't do it. I, Lindsay, I can't do it. I thought you'd be like amazing. No, I'm not good at it. Lindsay was, they were fucking phenomenal. Yeah, Lin Very yeah, they're good. They're awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then I got knocked the fuck out by Charlotte, who was just uh, out of all of us the improv powerhouse. I watched Charlotte. I watched you stand there and just roll through the other because it was mm -hmm. two. It was two different groups on either side, and you were. It was like you, and then just everyone is deflecting off of you. Yeah, I mean, somebody accurately pointed out it was like Charlotte. You were just repeating the questions back at them. I'm like, well, yeah, that's how you win. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. I've, I've 
I've I've done a lot of improv games and yeah. a lot of improv warm ups. So because <laughs> improv is all about winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You it's never want to build a scene. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to build scenes, um, but I realized I was like, that's not what we're doing here. That's, <laughs> that's not this. The sake of the improv that we did last night was purely just to get a good bit going. Yeah. And then yeah. as soon as as soon as any one like tiny rock in the road showed up, just a minuscule pebble, we would just go, okay, fuck this. And then, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I got, a, I got a good punchline that was related to San Francisco. Yeah. And, uh, and I, backed, I backed Jeremy down. <laughs> get out of here <laughs> there was, there, my favorite part of last night in terms of the show is something that no one will ever get to see mm -hmm. uh you did uh achievement hunter wrestling yeah. live and jeremy came out with his uh ray-bans aviators on mm -hmm. and through his intro he like took them off and tossed them off the stage and i saw them because i was standing on the side of the stage and i went i should pick those up so that nobody steps on them I picked them up and was going to give him one chance to be like, hey, do you want your aviators? And he just went, no. So then Elise and I did a bit where we threw them on the ground and pretended to like office space them, just like <laughs> smash the shit out of them. And he got more and more concerned and almost walked out to grab them and make sure they were okay. It's a bit that existed for nobody. It was just for Jeremy in that yeah. moment. No one will ever get to see it. Well, that's the beauty of those shows that I've learned because this is my first time ever doing any kind of live show is like it's just those things where on the fly you just think it's going to be funny whether anyone sees it or not and it ends up being like something that stays with you forever or like for for a long time so. yeah i mean that, that's the most important thing of shows like that is it's just let it like the stuff's gonna break not everything's gonna work you just have to roll with it and like make it funny or do it do your best to keep it moving like we had cues mess up we had some mic issues and things but it's like we can't stop that. Like whatever, you know, if you, if you then sit on stage and just pout, it's like, that just makes a horrible show, but it's like, you can play it up or do something different until things get corrected. And they're, they're, that's hard to teach, you know, it's like, and thankfully we have a really good crew where everyone kind of picks up on it. Everyone's really good about just continuing with the story of the show. The one thing that I've learned throughout doing live stuff is that the audience never knows how it's supposed to go. You know, the in your head, you're going to say like, oh, I flubbed the line or oh, this or that or whatever. And like that's ruined the whole show. Audience doesn't know. Yeah. yeah. They have no idea that you even messed up. They're yeah. fine with it. And so, you know, that, that's like my some of my favorite feedback. I have a friend in Seattle and, you know, she's not in our in this realm. It's, it's a couple of friends of mine. And uh, she uh, she she doesn't watch our content like she's not into like gaming content or anything. But, you know, she's a <laughs> close friend. I've known her for a number of years. And she went to the show in Seattle. She's like, oh, I had a great time. She's like, I didn't get any of the inside jokes, but I thought it was hilarious. And I'm like, that's perfect. Like, if, if someone who knows nothing about what we're doing can enjoy a show like that, that we've done something right, you know? And that makes me so very happy. Yeah, I had a great time, and I didn't get any of the inside jokes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know what were. <laughs> you, you were phenomenal during the uh, Achievement Hunter Wrestling. I uh, That was funny. Th well, <laughs> thank you. That's good to know. That's good to hear. Because I was just trying to listen to you, and I didn't want to step on... You oh, talking, no, and I was just like, because there were not really, there wasn't a lot of monitor coming back at us. Yeah, it was, well, because like the the thing that I learned doing it. So I'm just going to just explain oh, real yeah, quick. We funny. did the uh, a version of the Achievement Hunter Wrestling show that they just did where the characters, and so James did his, like James Angel and mm -hmm. Iffy and Jeremy and Michael and uh, Fiona came out and, I, and, and, and Fredo and... Uh, Patrick and myself joined Joe in commentating and bringing them down. And mm -hmm. Patrick and I were completely out of our element <laughs> and uh, unfamiliar with what was happening. Which yeah, is sort of perfect. That's, well, that's exactly what I wanted, honestly. I was also unfamiliar because I got asked to to host it and I was not part of Achievement Hunter Wrestling. I haven't really seen much of it. Yeah. Um, and so when you guys were just like, Screaming because what happened was my mic got stolen from me at some point. During yes, so, yeah, I did notice that. I was like, What's so going you on guys kind of carried it because I I was like at the mercy of everyone fighting around me. Then my mic got stolen, and then one of the wrestlers, Iffy, Iffy, need me in my chest. I don't know if the audience saw that. <laughs> But if he like need me super hard in the chest because we both turned around at the same time and he was pretending to do like a move on Fiona and Yikes. took me out like I could not breathe. And then he immediately picks me up. I went 
dead weight. And yeah. Lop me down on the couch. Your glasses came off, <laughs> and a bunch of us ran in there. And <laughs> while Ify is swinging you around, so your feet are going every which way. And Michael, Fiona, I think, and myself were all trying to get in there and grab your glasses because we were like, they're going to get ruined. Yeah, so we, we know how that how important those are. And Jeremy I was loving see. it. Jeremy yeah. was, yeah, because you weren't bullying. Him. Four of us are wearing glasses. We all know how it is without our glasses. Wow. Yeah. 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 Oh, shit. We yeah. just nerds up here. At least put me on. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the last thing I say before we cut to an ad. At least put me onto some fucking free game. She put, uh, she has a second pair of glasses that she calls her sleep glasses. So you can wear them while you're lying in bed or lying on the couch. And when you fall like asleep. on your side? Yeah. When you fall asleep, they're not special made glasses. They're just oh, a they second just cheap pair them. of glasses okay. that you don't care when you fall asleep and just like ruin them. I guess it wasn't worth it, but I do that. Get a second cheap <laughs> pair of glasses and never not, worry not, about it. Are you are you just farsighted so you can't see anything close? Uh, I'm nearsighted. Near I can sighted. see things near. Okay. So yeah. what what do you need glasses for? Like what are you doing in the oh, watching no, no. TV? Because you know, okay, like when I you fall so. asleep and you lay in your glasses, mm -hmm. otherwise you can break. Oh no, I know, but yeah. I'm saying just take them off if you're just watching. If you're looking at like reading a book or a phone or something. This is why I didn't want achievement hunter Don't. on my fucking show. Thanks for having us on. We're gonna cut to an ad break, and I'm gonna give Jack a stern talking <laughs> too. We'll be right back. Are you fascinated by shipwrecks and other maritime disasters like the Titanic or the time Dave Matthews tour bus dumped sewage on a bunch of tourists on the Chicago River? Well, you're in luck. There's a new podcast called Ship Hits the Fan. You may have heard of it. It stars myself and Patrick Brown, also from Funhouse, as well as Brian Garr, our old collaborator. We're not nautical experts. However, we are obsessed and just a little bit intrigued by ship disasters. And by the time you finish the podcast, we expect you will be too. Again, that is Ship Hits the Fan. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Google, Spotify, Podcast Addict, others. Come on, sit sail with us. What are you, chicken? Time is money, money is time. Don't waste either with repeated trips to the post office because with Stamps.com you can skip the trip and focus on taking your small business to the next level. Stamps.com lets you print official postage right from your computer. I use Stamps.com every single day when I'm shipping out stuff for my own podcast and I cannot tell you how great it feels to just be able to walk into the post office, skip past the line, drop off your packages, and walk out like nothing happened. It's amazing. And Stamps.com doesn't just make things easier, it makes shipping more affordable too. With Stamps.com you can get discounts that you cannot find anywhere else, like 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS rates. Whether you're an office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life so much easier. So stop overpaying for shipping with Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code FHPOD for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code FHPOD. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we've given our guests a stern chat, and they're going to be nice. Sorry, I'm sorry. sorry for disrespecting. For That's what I thought. The show. I didn't mean. I didn't mean it. <laughs> I tried doing a tough guy thing last night, like four times, and each time the person I was trying to intimidate just went, "You're so sweet." I watched oh. you try to do it to Gavin. Yeah, it was funny. I <laughs> that was I, the first time I ever met him. I was. I met Gavin last night for the first time as well. And you, after doing a whole show with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did uh, Survive. Survive Block Survive Island, Island which was so fun. I was which like, was, which one of them is yeah. We showed a preview of that during the, mm -hmm. during the show, and that was yeah. that got a good did response. Did you guys see that? Did you guys see I got Yeah, we were out yeah. in the house. We were out watching. It looks so good. It yeah. looks fun, yeah. yeah. We, I, he, I'm excited. He met Jacob and realized that that was Jacob from Survive Block Island, because he goes, <laughs> Jacob, loser Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say loser Jacob. I just said Jacob for, we won't say, but... You know, Jacob. I didn't really get any interaction with him whatsoever. But that, so. that that was a bit like that's one of those things where you you know people who've worked on live shows before, like or kind of performances like that before, and people who haven't, because Trevor Trevor did this beautiful thing where he pretended to be Steve Jobs at a whole presentation. It was beautiful. hilarious, and he's like, "Now we're going to show a bit of Block Island." And so the idea was the editors were going to send us like a kind of a highlight reel of Block Island, maybe a little bit at the beginning. 
they sent us a 20 minute clip and they're like, just run the whole thing. It's like, yeah, we're not going to spend 20 minutes during a three hour show on Block Island. We love you. And we ended up running about 10 minutes of it or so, but still it was like, but not 20. No, no. not 20. Not okay. 20. Let's not. We have so much other stuff to get to. I don't think any one bit was longer than 15 minutes and all of the shows we yep. did just because we're, there's so much stuff we want to get through. But anyway, we interrupted you, Charlotte. I apologize. You did? You were talking about meeting yeah. Joe. Oh, just about... botched social interactions. I, I went to introduce myself um, and I said, hi, I'm Charlotte. And then he stuck out his hand and I had just been in the bathroom and went, mine are wet. And then so he just went <laughs> like this and then we pounded it and I just went, all right. And then I walked away. I was like, well, <laughs> oops. <laughs> but then he came to me later and he said, I realized I didn't even say my name to you. <laughs> And I realized something had been missing from the interaction. So we both walked away from it going, that wasn't good. <laughs> that wasn't good at all. <laughs> Which is the, the appropriate way to meet Gavin. So that works out really well for like you. Sounds like about how I met Gavin as yeah. well. So. Make oh, sure your hands are moist. I did a You're bad gonna job. You're going to want to get them real wet. I did a bad job too. I walked up to him and I said, hey man, it's nice to meet you. Can I borrow some money? <laughs> He did not like that. Did he know who you were, or was just some some strange person walked up to him? Uh, no, I just I walked. Yeah, I wasn't even backstage. I waited until he was walking to his Uber. <laughs> oh no! Standing outside the hotel. Yeah, I said, <laughs> I'm starting to see why it didn't work. And I went, Hey man, give me some money. <laughs> Welcome to Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Uh, so this this live show that you did, these three shows, has been something that you've been planning for a really long time yeah yeah we uh the, the we were gonna do this in march of 2020 like that was the initial Ooh. dates for it and uh and obviously march of 2020. you know march 2020 a little bit rough some some stuff kind of popped up oh that's when i got my bike <laughs> oh, okay so a lot of people started looking for pelotons um <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it was uh we like because i mean like january is kind of when covid sort of touched america and then february yeah. started growing and then around March, it was like, uh-oh. And uh, and so <laughs> we, you know, it our... our <laughs> it was kind of like, uh-oh. <laughs> was well, you know, it started getting serious. Like, are we going to start shutting things yeah. down? You know, the, you know, two weeks to stop the spread. Um, That's that works. Two weeks. Yeah. Fuck, man. Shut it down. Um, they meant years. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're past to that. Slow yeah. the to slow the spread. They were off it. by a couple weeks. But uh, yeah, some of the last things I did, some of the last things, uh, my last travel I did before pandemic hit was I came out to Fun House to do a charity stream for, remember Australia was on fire in 2020? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We did a charity stream in this room, as a matter of fact, and, and we came thought, out for that. We thought that was as bad as it gets. Yeah. Those it was pretty bad, though. Fucking yeah, fiery was koalas. Horrible. Pretty, pretty bad. Uh, Australia's yeah. underwater now. They're flooding now which is oh, the, the okay. opposite of fire uh, send the fire back <laughs> yes, kind of serious right. ways yeah. and then i went to san francisco <laughs> i went to san francisco to kind of funny to promote the san francisco show yeah and that was the last time i traveled um and, th and then uh we got to the point where we were about a month out from the shows and it came it came down to it, it was like we have to cancel them because shows started canceling we canceled our shows which are we put we postponed at that time. We postponed our shows to like October. And then like two days later, South by Southwest got canceled in Austin, which was like, this is now it's getting serious. And when a, when a massive, massive production like that goes down. And I, f I felt better about when we canceled ours because we kind of beat the other big people to the punch. It's like if we're just sort of following everyone else, it doesn't seem like we actually care. Like, we were actually paying attention to it. And we're like, we're going to back out. And then other people started following suit shortly thereafter. Yeah, but. E3 is still gone. They just announced that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is wild. And, yeah, know. it's sad. And Jeff Keighley's like... <laughs> 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 I remember March 19th, 2020, I was doing a stand-up show and it was the last show that I ever did before the pandemic. And it, like we said, COVID was already here. People were taking precautions. We were wearing masks. Uh, every This was the stage where everyone was getting a cold and going, man, I already got it. You yeah, know? Yeah. But we did this show and uh, it was right before I was going to kick off going on the road for like months at a time. And I just remember the host of the show going up there and being like, thanks, thanks all for coming out and not being afraid of this fucking COVID thing. It's so it's just dumb. The flu. It only kills the old people, am I right? And fuck them. Who needs them? And he got the crowd to chant, like, let's go, COVID. Oh, and God, did this whole God. thing. Cause again, this is before uh, we, we, he thought 
he's, he's a good dude. He's doing it jokingly. He thought we're going to go into hiding for two weeks and we're going to come out and it's just going to be this funny thing that happened. A couple weeks ago, I got a notification that was like, hey, here's a memory from two years ago. <laughs> oh, and I saw the no. video and sent it to him. And he goes, you can never let this get out. Please, for the love of God. This will end me. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's... Uh, God, talk about a shitty thing. So it's, one of, it's one of the things, like, no one had any idea it would get to this level. Like, no. I thought maybe it'd be like, you know, it'd be six months. And it's like, okay, vaccines. <laughs> when the vaccines show up, then everyone will get the vaccine and it'll, that will kill it. Yeah. And then well, here we are. <laughs> that's how I fucked up is I, I had, I was double vaccined up and I thought I was impervious. And I went, I, I fully admit to it. I went somewhere that was very crowded. I wasn't wearing a mask and I was in the middle of having a great night, looked around at all these people's faces and went, ah, this is bad. I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> like, oh. And that's when I got it. Oh. I was there. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, no. Were yeah. you, you, were you were, masked you were as well? I was unmasked. Uh -oh. I did not get it then, though. No. And then I can't, I, I, yeah, it, it just. Uh. I mean, for, for so I've, I've yet to get it. I've gone to Florida like four times and I still haven't gotten it. You were I, telling me. I don't know how I've gone. I ran a marathon. Yeah. We with, need to you know, study you. Yeah, I, we need I to get you into the lab. <laughs> but yeah, it's, so it's wild. You're, I, you're going places to do like physical exercise. You're eating well. What is mm. it? See, what's the difference between you and me? I can, just can't. <laughs> I feel like we're the same. Yeah, but basically, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking in a mirror here between the two of us. <laughs> um, dirty. <laughs> but no, I, I don't know how I've done it. I've been, I mean, I, I've been, per, you know, cautious and whatnot. But I mean, I, I have been in, out and doing stuff now. I mean, obviously, <laughs> excuse me. Oh, 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 oh whoa, oh, okay. Oh, the timing, oh, the timing. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> once I got vaccinated, then it was kind of like, okay. Like, I made it to up to the point where I got my shot. I'm like, Okay, then it's like sort of the weight, the heavy weight got lifted off. Yeah. Mm. But even being vaccinated, like you still be careful about it, you know? And like people complaining about wearing masks on planes, like shut up. You can wear a mask for three I, hours. I like wearing the mask in certain scenarios now. Like a lot of people, I don't know wherever it is everywhere else, but LA is like, people are pretty much like, ah, you don't need to wear a mask anywhere. And people working places, which like I'm not going to begrudge them, but I'm going to keep wearing it at like grocery stores and coffee shops and traveling, like planes, mm -hmm. like. I don't want to breathe other people's air. Well, some of my the one sort of nice side effect of this is going to restaurants and seeing like the the cooks wearing masks. I'm like, oh, okay, I actually feel better about that. Yeah. And the other day, I went somewhere and they were like cooking food and they didn't have masks. And I was like, oh no, they're they're gross. It, it's I mean, gonna end up on the. Food. It puts it into perspective, like yeah. how we were all comfortable not wearing masks. Uh, like we, yeah. we we're comfortable not wearing masks before, and then after COVID, now everyone's like, I may never take it off because I realize how gross. People are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't. Disgusting. Yeah. I may have said this before on the show, but I, I saw my first employee at like a Chipotle or something not wearing a mask and my brain went, that can't be sanitary. <laughs> is that is that legal? Yeah, and then like yeah. completely forgetting the 20, whatever, three or four years that I lived where everyone just didn't have a mask. Just licking on. the tortillas to put stuff on. Yeah. Oh. It was, well, that's how you stick them together. Mm -hmm. It's like a joint. <laughs> you just, just roll it. <laughs> Um, yeah, God damn. I, I didn't, I just thought when I had gotten fully vaccinated, like I'm safe now, oh. I'm, you know, I'm good. The problem that we didn't know is that I think it was Pfizer. It was only effective for like up to six months or something, Yeah, which yeah. makes, that's what makes this whole thing so terrifying to me. In addition to, you know, the death and the weird, violent refusal to do anything about it for other people. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I the thing that scares me the most is the not knowing is that everything changes so constantly. So you can look up something on the internet and it is at the time of reading it the most accurate statement and then you don't check the news or anything about it for a couple months and then somebody will inform you that actually yeah. the the vaccine that you took is basically worthless now so you got to go get a a booster, which I'm fine with. Apparently the second booster is coming out now too. I, I just got a notification from my uh health insurance Maybe provider. Maybe that's why yeah. CD DC in immune <laughs> national was Surely, trying to call me. You gotta get the second one. <laughs> I can't believe they had, it was. It was like it. It, it was. It looked weird. Yeah. No, I think it was a scam. It was. Well, a yeah, scam. it just. It just looked weird. It was they, like get a booster and your your warranty's out of date. On hello, your I'm calling on behalf of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Mm. We're conducting the national immunization survey. Uh, whatever. I don't know. Just some scam caller, but mm. Mm. I don't know. But you responded, know. right? You gave me your yeah, information. Yeah, you gave them everything. Yeah. Social security. Number, I didn't give them everything. Just number. my mom's maiden name and my social. Yeah. It's yeah. important oh, stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
they need yeah. that for boosters. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm listen. I am trying to help you, uh, uh, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you both are in Los Angeles for a couple of days, or Jack, you fly out tomorrow. Yeah, I take off tomorrow. Joe, yeah. you're. I'm here until Wednesday early morning. I leave at like five thirty. Okay. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. You do you guys have any big fun LA plans? Anything you got to do before you go back? I mean, I'm the theme park guy, so the idea was okay. I was going to go down to uh, to Disneyland after the show. So today, like, so it's Monday now, and you know we're going to come hang out with you guys at Fun House, make some content, and then on Tuesday I was going to go to Disneyland, and go hang out there, and then Wednesday go home. But uh, before we booked the trip, I checked in Disneyland. Like, you have to get reservations for the parks now. Yeah. And they were just booked up for the week because it's spring break right now. And I was like, I didn't even think about that. Oops. And so I'm just flying back tomorrow. So uh, I might go see a movie. The, the, there's an Alamo Draft House downtown, which yep. Alamo started in Austin. So I'm like, yeah, I might go oh, check man. out the uh, the L.A. Draft House. We invited you. Yeah, yeah. We just, wait, when did that happen? When did that happen? I am, at lunch. I am, uh, okay. Yes, it did happen. I am so out of it. I'm just running on like, you know. No sleep. What is going on here? I know they're, we're communicating. They're, they're whisper oh. talking. I'm trying yeah, to tell them I can't read lips. <laughs> <laughs> this is really a good no audio, audio yeah. experience. <laughs> <laughs> they're digging it. Yeah, I really like the podcast. I thought it was weird when they all started not talking all at once. <laughs> well, but we're yeah, good at having probably. the uh, the audio podcast at, at Rooster Teeth. So, but, yeah. No, I don't uh, have any plans. Um, I just really want to go to Koreatown. And hell yeah. I've You're going to get some barbecue? So long. Oh, sorry? You're going to get some barbecue? Yep. Yep. Yeah, um, hell yeah. My girlfriend loves Korean food and she's never been in Koreatown in LA, so I want to go there is, eat some oh, food. Sick. I'm going to, well, we can definitely do this off the podcast, but there's a place that I want you to go to. If you like uh, bibimbap, mm -hmm. they do hot stone bibimbap and it is the best fucking bibimbap I have ever okay. had in my entire Homework. life. Yeah, uh, bibimbap is pretty good. I uh, I don't really eat it too often. I think for me, it's like more so. I don't know. Like I, I eat rice all the time, so it's like I'm like, oh, I don't want to eat rice. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> you know what That's I mean? That's fair. There's also a lot of other great shit. I just I we found this little restaurant in a shopping center. It's one of the places where it's like it's like this with Mexican food too, where if you walk in and they don't know how to communicate with you in yeah. English, you know it's gonna be good. Yep, yep. I'm pointing at pictures. I had to ask for salt one time and I had to just Google <laughs> the word for salt. Do you remember Did what you? it was? Not at all. Salt I couldn't pronounce it either. Either, so I just pointed my phone <laughs> like it's dumbass American. <laughs> um, yeah. Sal. Sal. You in couldn't Spanish? <laughs> yeah. You did it in Spanish. I'm not oh, talking about Korean? Spanish. Oh, I'm talking about Korean. Korean. Oh. Uh oh. I, I've misunderstood what you were talking about. I was on the same page with you, no. Charlotte. I, was, I assumed it was Mexican place they were going to. It's really... Gonzal. <laughs> Yo quiero. Por favor. Bien. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Pr I can't pronounce this. Denada. It's Hogum. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> see, that's why I just shoved my phone in some poor woman's face, and she went. <laughs> have you have you have you had that happen ever again? Like where you had just a straight up like a language barrier where you just couldn't talk to someone before? Yeah, I've done that in uh, in in Mexico, and then some other times that I've like had to communicate with people where it's just terrifying. Yeah, where you're like, I've had stuff with like you know passports, and you're just stuck somewhere, and they're trying, they're like yelling at you, and you're like, <laughs> ah, fuck, <laughs> what language do they speak <laughs> in Dubai? <laughs> and you're just terrified. Luckily, <laughs> most of the places I've gone, people somebody speaks a passable amount of english yeah. which really just speaks to just how hey man imperialism is a hell of a thing dog. Man, I, I went to paris with my wife and my, my parents and uh my parents did the very kind of like old white person thing where they were just kind of rude to a waiter at a restaurant i'm like cool i'm never speaking again in, in paris <laughs> yeah get his ass yeah <laughs> and uh and so literally i would go to places my wife's australian so i would just make her talk to everyone because i'm like i don't want anyone to even know i'm from america and uh and, uh, and unfortunately i was so like haunted by it that i ended up eating at mcdonald's like three times <laughs> only because they had a touch screen and i could just make my order on the i didn't have to talk to anyone oh. And uh, it would print out a receipt, but it had a number on it. And I'm like, I know how to count to about 10 in French. So I would just sit there and just kind of like eyeball who else would like was also in line and be like, I guess that's probably they mine. And I would just like hold up my number and they would slide a bag. And I'm like, okay. And I would just do my best not to say a word. I understand what happened now. I was going to yeah. say they wrote down the word, but they when they call it out. They yeah, yeah. Well, they, they would call out numbers and they're like, like sank, whatever. And I'm like, oh, 
Do do. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, and just, that is not a number. I'm just saying it's smells like shit in here. <laughs> but it's Royale with cheese for what I it's was worth. just about to ask. Yeah, yeah. Is that that's a legit thing. Yeah, Royale with cheese. Man, Quentin, <laughs> incredible. Way to go, my man. The <laughs> level of authenticity in his movies. <laughs> yeah, like, do you know Hitler died in a theater? It was awesome. I thought it was a bunker and he killed himself, but no, it was a woman with a flamethrower yeah. killed Hitler. I, I was talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood the other day. And someone was like, didn't you think it was a bit much the way he killed those teens? I was like, no, it was a movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't real. Yeah. <laughs> so I was actually okay with it. Uh, I, uh, yeah. So anyway, you're invited to go to the movie. If you oh, want. thank you. If yeah. there's tickets, I, I, first I, time need the, I need the reminder because I am just like, my mind is just not here today. You guys like, haven't been sleeping much. My voice much. is like, yeah. my voice yeah. is starting to go. It's a little yeah. shot. And like, um, today's just been kind of a haze. Yeah, it's a... Oh, that's LA. That's all the weed. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Oh, shit. Is that here. getting out? Yeah. <laughs> you were hanging around next to Ryan Haley. For <laughs> yeah. So you almost, almost got in his car. I almost rode in Ryan Haley's car. He was cleaning it out for me. Yeah. <laughs> he was shoving like bottles and stuff off the seat so I could sit down. And then uh, and then Omar saved me. I so. knew Omar was coming out, and I didn't think he was going to ride in Ryan's car, so I just kind of floated around okay, on the that's periphery what you of doing. the parking lot. I was like, I'll just see how this plays out. <laughs> and then, sure yeah, enough. Yeah. I was excited. I, it's like, Ryan fascinates me, like, you know, the majority of the, the audience. And because uh, it is certainly feels like the, like we are just like background characters in Ryan Haley's story. Yeah. Like he has such a w weird fucking life. And I'm I love it. I love every bit of it. Every taste of Ryan lore. We recorded content today with him in, a, in an upcoming video. And I got to hear a follow up on some Ryan lore firsthand, which made me very, very excited. I can only wonder which which exact thread he was pulling <laughs> and on. which first hand you're talking about. Well, he was, he was sitting right next to me. Which hand was it? Oh, uh, right. Mm. <laughs> I'm a southpaw, so I'm good. I can. I still have primary use of my left hand. You guys going to see Morbius? Is that the plan? Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, it's really good. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Michelle Yeoh's. But you should see Morbius instead. I don't even know what that movie is. It, that's perfect. Morbius. I've seen the trailer. I don't know what that no, movie is. No, no, so. movie that. Oh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah. It's about uh, this like really smart doctor who has a rare genetic blood disease. Yeah, and the theory of everything, yeah. everywhere, all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so to fix it, he mixes his DNA with bats. Oh, I thought you were doing the oh. theory of everything. I thought you were doing no, the Stephen with, Hawking I, I was thing. No, no, oh, no. Okay. I was doing the cinematic masterpiece that is Morbius. It's the mm. it's the same director of Swiss Army Man, right? Yeah. So yeah. The, yeah. So to separate the threads here, we were just <laughs> yeah. talking about Morbius. They, they did Morbius. Yeah. Morbius has a very heavy presence on the Funhouse channel. Thank you, James, for that one. Awesome. Um, and then everywhere, ever all at once is the Daniels who made Swiss Army Man and the Turn Down for What music video. Oh, okay. And they are just some of the most innovative what? filmmakers Is yeah that, they really for yeah real? yeah all those practical effects that was them huh oh, that's cool yeah because like they that there's a there's a woman that they've had she was i can't remember her name but she was in glow as well she, and she's that like pakistani or something yeah i know you're talking yeah about and she was in that movie um with the aliens uh, the fuzzball aliens that came out like last year or two years ago with the guy from search party i'm getting off any sure it, 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 glow off, is fantastic off, by the yeah. way two seasons they cancel the third which breaks my heart either way she's in she's like a cameo in the, really? uh, in everywhere everything everywhere the movie's great spoiler alert very minor now yeah. now i know she's there also uh <laughs> is it kwan he key the, the guy who was short round and in, in indiana jones is in it as well is that who that is yeah, yeah. he's really good yeah, he was in goonies as you know yeah oh my goonies. god yeah he's he's tremendous i didn't know i didn't put that together i think he took a break from acting and is just now returning to it he he, he did he was inspired um rick moranis i know i think but well, no, rick moranis <laughs> hasn't made the comeback like he was he was inspired by some film i can't remember what it was hmm. might have been crazy rich asians I'm that's not cool. sure Anyway, I'm oh, excited I that for movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. I'm back. <laughs> no, it's, it's nice because like uh, I, I I love just films like that. Like your Charlie Kaufman's, you know, your like those kinds of movies. Your uh, you know Eternal Sunshine type movies. Like I love stuff like that. So this one looks fascinating. You watch Kidding? No, Kidding is a show with Jim Carrey in it, and it is. Uh, heavily inspired by like the Charlie Kaufman. Oh style. really? Yeah, it's. Is good. That's cool. Sorry, I I realize I just remembered that we're on a podcast and that's not an interesting <laughs> thing to add to the conversation. But I I don't know. There's that. There's very like. I think it's coming into popularity maybe again, but that like sort of surrealist, half 
analogy, half real story kind of storytelling where like even visually speaking, like Hiro Mori, who does Atlanta, mm-hmm. uh, his this whole third season of Atlanta is fucking great. That's what I've heard. I haven't watched it yet. But that show does a perfect job of like keeping you in this weird place where it's like, is this real? Is this real or is this just how it felt? Was it season one or two that had Justin Bieber on the show? The second season. Well, yeah, but it wasn't Justin Bieber. No. It was just some dude. <laughs> yeah. kept, it's like, oh, that's Justin Bieber. It's like, yeah, it definitely throws you for a loop. It's like, are we supposed to think that's it yeah i, I they love they do stuff. that yeah they do that oh, man that show is so fucking yeah. good this they they started season three with a standalone episode that is a thematic statement on what the entire season is going to be about and it is one of the most fucking like upsetting <laughs> episodes of television i think i've ever watched because the entire time i'm watching it I had to calm myself down because I went, this is so awful and so racist and I need to remember that this is a script that somebody wrote and it's fine. And then after the episode ended, I looked it up and it's a real thing that happened to a person. Oh my God. And it just like, it hurt my fucking heart. And um, man, but that show does such a great job of it. And I feel like that's what a lot of those sort of things, like the, you know, Kidding does it really well, exceptionally well. Uh, the Daniels do it really well too. That sort of feel of like, what is what is real, yeah. and does it matter, or is it just a physical visual representation of how it's supposed to feel? You know what I realized um, hearing the past like five five minutes conversation. You don't watch I don't, enough movies. I don't watch enough movies. TV shows. <laughs> oh, dog! I hate movies now. I think for me, it's just like uh, there was a lot. There was a point in my time where I just didn't have time for anything, so I just didn't give myself that like freedom to just do the things I want to do. I was just always sleeping, <laughs> <laughs> always sleeping and working. Just, <laughs> just just doing the bear, just doing the hibernation do, thing. Just yeah, missing, yeah, missing yeah, all the just, content. Just doing what I can to scrape by and just survive. And then now that I have the time. I realize I've missed out a lot. <laughs> I miss out on a lot. Then you vote Pokemon as the best show on TV ever. <laughs> I know it's beating. I'm disappointed you. Disappointed in you, Rooster wait, what, Teeth audience. Wait, what, what, what was it against? Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. Probably Pokemon arguably the, against Breaking Bad. It's it is looking like it's going I, to. I grew up watching Pokemon. It's not better than Breaking Bad. I haven't even watched all of Breaking Bad. Breaking, Breaking Bad's a masterpiece. I've only watched. So like, I think I'm. I think I only watched like the up to the third season of, of Breaking Bad. Of Breaking Bad. Yeah. yeah. So they actually, they, sorry, sorry to spoil it, but they make meth legal. Yeah. And cure cancer. Wow. Do yeah. They, do they live in Colorado? Yeah. Because Colorado legalizes everything first for some reason. It's Colorado. Yeah. Colorado and then uh, Oregon or Portland finish, followed slightly. Yeah. After. Yeah. Okay. I see. Wow. Wow. Keep Portland almost as weird as Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the then weird... Austin beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've always said that of all of the shows about small children capturing monsters, Breaking Bad has always been my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I, I really love how like he captures and like kind of collects all these little like crystal monsters, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then he just you know sells them to people, <clears throat> and then they smoke them. Do any of the Pokemon get you high? <laughs> yeah, uh, probably gang- Vileplume. Probably. Yeah, oh Vileplume. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or who am I, I guess, thinking? Gloom? Ghastly. Yeah. I Gasly. think that kills you. Haunter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but first he smokes you out. <laughs> My and man. It's really dank. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, Gasly, do what you're gonna do. Yeah, man. I don't even mind at this point. It's like those spiders with the toxins, right? They like give you like euphoria, right? While they're like killing you. Uh, they may they sit you down. Well, that's and force more like you to, to watch bugs. two seasons of <laughs> euphoria. I don't know. Forgive don't listen to me. I, I think I might be making something up. No, it's, it's okay. fine. It's no one checks cool. anything on the internet yeah. anyway. Yeah. So they're always checking. You can just rattle stuff out like vaccines don't work, and people agree with you. So Jack's it works my out. dad. There you go. See, boom. Okay. I keep looking for a father figure Politics. in this company, and one day I'm going to find it. One one of these days, man. One no. of them. I have too many yeah. adopted I, children already. Already, so. I found my father figure. Yeah. Who is Chief. it? Don't worry about it. It's yeah. uh, Michael Jones. Really. Yeah, I call him Papa on a regular basis, and he hates it. Michael Jones is too similar to my actual father. <laughs> oh, oh God! I'm well, sorry. I've, yeah. I've, that, that does yeah. explain a lot. That's though. why I'm looking yeah. for a father now. Oh. <laughs> Dad, if you're seeing this, <laughs> I love you. Don't Google who Michael Jones is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I want to thank the two of you for coming on. Um, you've been fantastic. Hanging out with both of you has been so great. Uh, 
The first time I met Jack was on Last Laugh, and he came out in the rat costume. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he did an inside bit with his friends, and it was really sweet, and they were so happy to see him. And then he turned to me, and he went, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and then he left the room, and I went, wow. <laughs> so that's Jack, huh? Oh, man. They cut out... like. They cut out a lot of the stuff I did for Last Laugh Season 2. I made a white privilege joke that I was pretty proud of that yeah. I think got cut from the show. And then, uh, yeah. And then, I don't know. Did that bit make it into the show? I, mean, I don't remember. I don't think so. It was like, I popped up. I got Blaine to crack, like, immediately. And then I think that was, like, the last you saw of me. But there, I think like, everything else was That's gone. what they did, is you got one laugh, and then in the show that they aired, yeah. you went, all right, later, fuckers. <laughs> yeah. And then just it dipped I out. I did my one thing. But, yeah. Joe. That, that's a show I... You guys, a great job on it. Oh my god, thank! I did nothing. <laughs> I stayed in the fight, is what I did. <laughs> Joe, the first time I met you was last night, as I yeah. snuck into your green room to steal more of your white claws. Yeah, yeah, and then it was just kind of just like, oh hey, yeah, hey, I'm I'm Joe. Nice to meet you. And then that was kind of the end of our interaction for like an hour, for a long time. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. we because we hated each other. Yeah, I the moment I saw your face, I was like. I fucking hate this guy. Yeah. The moment I saw your face, I I could I went, Oh, this guy hates me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been so nice being able to hang out with the two of you. Incredibly funny, incredibly uh talented in so many different ways. Jack, your ability to put together a live show. Joe, your ability to use a spoon. Um <laughs> just phenomenal. Thank you. It's Charlotte, a fucking powerhouse of comedy that everything you say is a bit that makes me laugh. Stop, stop. Thank you. The one, the one in a fun house, it's, it's unfair. You guys got all the super, super talented women. That's, I mean, I'm not saying ours, our, our women, our, our women, Jesus. I'm just going to stop talking. Thanks for having no, me. No, that was really good. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Jack, everything went so well. It was going well. It went and then I tried so to, well. I was yeah. trying to backpedal to make it sound like oh. I don't appreciate the women we work with because Lindsay and Kai and BK, everyone's, they're all amazing. Oh. Everyone's, all women are fantastic. I, I, fuck. I, I was doing so good. All women are fantastic. I was, doing, oh. I was doing so good just <laughs> scraping by and then I just, I was, oh. and then Jack oh, just I think that was, I think that was fine. I think that was good. I'll that was good it for the end. So, hey, everybody, <laughs> go watch Achievement Hunter stuff if you're not already. Uh, Joe, Jack, Jack, Joe, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks the for show. having thank us. Appreciate it. Charlotte, awesome. amazing as always. All Rick, women. Thank you. For t <laughs> yeah, this one goes out to all women. <laughs> Rick, thanks for being on the ones and twos. I'm Armando. We love you. Have a fantastic night, day, evening, all of it. And we're so sorry. Dusk. <laughs>